Ulrich Zwingli was a Roman Catholic priest in Switzerland. He was hungry for continuing education, and so he read broadly in scholastic theology, the early church fathers, and he even taught himself Greek so that he could read the New Testament in the original language. He also began to read the writings of Erasmus, which led him to question certain church practices. Zwingli's reputation for preaching led to his appointment as the people's priest at the Grossmünster, or Great Church in Zurich. As preacher to the people, he set about to proclaim the story of the Savior Christ by preaching through Matthew, and the life of the church by preaching through Acts. In his sermons, he attacked church practices of fasting and tithing, and these attacks were popular with the people, but opposed by church officials. Zwingli stressed the idea of the alliance between the Old and the New Testament. For Zwingli, it's also important to emphasize the participation of the people, the, the word which was understandable to everyone. Zwingli was drawn to the writings of Martin Luther and the stirrings of the Reformation in Germany. His critique of the Roman Catholic Church increased, motivated by his conviction that Scripture alone was the sole authority for faith and life. A series of public disputations in Zurich led to a break with Roman Catholic authority. The Swiss Reformation had begun. Zwingli was not only concer concerned with theology, Zwingli also cared a lot about society. So for Zwingli, the reformation of, a, of the structure of society was important. Social justice, right from the beginning, played an important role. We in Switzerland, we had a mercenary uh, system where people from the cantons of Switzerland would go and fight wars for other regional superpowers. And Zwingli was strongly opposed to that. So Zwingli introduced a position, theologically founded, but also socially acceptable that this mercenary position, uh, Reisläuferei, as it was called, should be abolished. Unfortunately, the break with Rome was soon accompanied with a break between Zwingli and Luther. They could not agree over theology of the Lord's Supper, and especially over the meaning of Jesus' words, this bread is my body. Luther and the other reformers all denied the traditional Catholic understanding that the bread and the wine at communion were literally transformed into Christ's body and blood. But he did believe that Christ really was present in the elements. For Zwingli, on the other hand, the bread and the wine were merely symbols to aid in an act of remembrance. And the Lord's Supper was a spiritual act. This rift between the two over their understanding of the Lord's Supper was bitter and it was enduring. For a Swiss, it's important to emphasize that the Reformed tradition has not actually started in Geneva, but it started long before here in Zurich with Huldrich Zwingli, who was the pastor of this church, and Huldrich Zwingli, who had his own Reformation ideas not directly linked to Martin Luther, but influenced by Luther. So it's important for us to say that the Reformation has many names, and many forms, and it's not a uniform movement. Ulrich Zwingli was tragically killed in a religious political battle with Catholic Swiss forces in 1531, but the momentum didn't stop. He was succeeded by the learned Heinrich Bullinger the author of the Second Helvetic Confession. For the church, Bullinger actually became perhaps even more influential. It was Bullinger who reformed the church according to what Zwingli started as a reformist movement. Bullinger was the one who then put that into theology. Bullinger had an extensive writing relationship with all sorts of countries in Europe. Um, I understand that there are thousands of letters Bullinger wrote, and from Bullinger a, a theological renewal went all through Europe, which Zwingli only started, but it became more apparent then under Bullinger. So Bullinger is much less known because he was a, a generation after Zwingli, but Bullinger in a way shaped the Reformed theology in Switzerland and in Europe much more. As a result of Bullinger's work, Zwingli's teachings endured in Zurich and spread well beyond. And he's remembered today as the father of the Swiss Reform Movement 
and an essential player in the Protestant Reformation.